Welcome back to the channel, and if this is your first time here, hello and welcome. Well, if you've been following along this build so far, you've probably noticed that I've jumped around a little bit. Now, I haven't really shown as much detail as I would really like, and so I'm going to go back and I'm going to do it again, mostly because I didn't do it right the first time. And this is a pretty good learning experience for myself, and I assume that there's some value to be had in showing it to you all. Now, I'm definitely no stranger to building an engine. However, I've never really built a 606 before. Typically, when setting the timing of any engine, you want to set the engine to top dead center, and usually there's a mark on the case that coincides with that. However, the 606 is just a little bit different, and because of that, you can mess things up. So sit back, relax, and enjoy how to actually find top dead center and set the timing on your OM606. So now, although it's a pain, I have to undo all my hard work. There's just no other way to do this properly. At this stage in the game, I'm pretty confident taking this thing apart, as I've already done it twice already. Keeping things organized, especially in my small garage, has been a bit of a challenge, but I've been able to get away with most of the things pretty easily. Don't underestimate the value of taking your time. You might actually just do it right the first time. And with as fun as it is perpetually working on one single thing, it's really not that fun. If you don't have a dial gauge, there's some pretty good ones on Amazon. I'll leave the link below to the one that I use so that you can get it yourself. Now the OM606 is a pretty unique engine as engines go. Now this is a very light engine and the crank is offset by a full millimeter. And because of that, if you were to set the timing just by top dead center alone, your engine probably wouldn't run very well. If you've ever built one of these engines like this and did it the way that I did it the first time, leave a comment below and let us know how it actually ran. Now we're ready to find true top dead center. So get your meter out and dialed in with your magnet block. And we need about three to four millimeters to play with here. So make sure you dial that in accordingly. If you've never used a dial gauge before, this is a very useful tool to have, especially when trying to find top dead center. So what you'll do is once you get the piston up as far as it'll go to the top, you'll set your dial gauge down on top of it and set the dial to zero. Now take your time with this because these are very precise instruments. And the more precise you are in the preparation, the more precise your results will be at the end. One thing to keep track of before you move further, make sure that your cam chain is at least tight on the crank but loose at anywhere else. This will prevent it from binding up on the actual crank itself and you don't want to turn very fast. We're now going to rotate the engine clockwise until your meter reads 3.23 millimeters down from top dead center. On the dial gauge itself, every revolution is one millimeter. So go slow and make sure that you're keeping track of where you are in the cycle. Once you get to three millimeters, slow down and count it out until you reach 3.23 millimeters. Once you're satisfied with the results, you can now set your timing marker. Now, your marker should be pointing right at the 20 mark on the crank. The leading edge is where your timing mark is located on the pointer. Once you're happy with the position of the pointer, lock in your bolt and double check your work. There's no shame in double checking. After all, 
We want this thing to run, right? It's always amazing to me the amount of preparation that goes into these builds and a lot of people don't understand just how complicated some of it can be. Now, with videos like this, especially on YouTube as a YouTube Academy mechanic myself, this has made things a heck of a lot easier and I don't exactly have to go off and look at a manual because there's somebody on here who's already done it. Now that your timing is all set, you can put your head back on knowing full well it'll be in time. Now set your engine to the zero marker on the pulley and reinstall your head. This will come in handy when you go to install your cams so that all your markings will line up properly. I know this video is pretty short, but Thank you for following along, and I hope that you found this useful. I'll see you all next Thursday on Vintage G Overland.